You know, many people in this country are feeling these days that the O.J. Simpson verdict has severed black and white relationships. Well, according to a recent Los Angeles Times poll, the civil verdict against O.J. determined that 71% of whites feel that O.J. is guilty, while 71% of blacks feel O.J. is not guilty. Has this trial of the century, as some call it, really harmed race relationships beyond repair? And whatever happened to Martin Luther King's dream of a colorblind society? Well, today we're going to see if we can mend some of those torn fences or at least get some conversation started that might lead to some mending. My panel consists of political commentator Isola Foster, Will Ritchie, who says racism is a myth, and Ralph Wiley there, who says he doesn't know what planet Will might be living on if he says that. Also, developmental psychologist Lenora Fulani is joining us, and WABC radio talk host Mike Gallagher. And Mike says that blacks should stop hiding behind discrimination. Well, the first question we're going to throw out is, are blacks and whites, in, in, in our panel's opinion, treated the same when it comes to the law? In other words, do the police act differently depending on the color of someone's skin? Ralph, you are quick to say absolutely. A color of skin does make a difference. Talk to me about that. Yeah, but and that's where people make a, they misconstrue bigotry, prejudice, hate crimes with racism. It's not the same thing. Racism is a structure. And the structure is inherently, endemically racist. It was based on profiteering off of people. And um, if you stop and think about not just Rodney King, but people like Wesley Snipes or Joe Morgan, the former baseball player, even Johnny Cochran himself, when he was the assistant district attorney in Los Angeles, was stopped and accosted and rousted with his children in the car by police because he was driving an expensive car. You see, when it's white people, life is first and property is second. When it's black people, property is more important than life. Rolanda, well, let yes, me add something ahead. to that. Uh, I think we have to be real careful about uh, what he's saying here in that the police are not the ones we should be mad at. We should be mad at the thugs that set the modus operandi for the police to operate. Well, I didn't say I was mad at the yeah. police. Now, what do you I'm mean by that? They they well, me. they have to create some sort of a profile. That's the way everybody works in the police department. They have to create a profile. And our young people out there that are in the drugs and all types of crime, they set the mode for the police to pick up anybody that fits a certain mold. And, My we, never, and we never get there. We never get that far. We always forget what instigated lousy behavior by cops uh, like Stacy Kuhn and those thugs who beat that guy to a pulp. We forget what started it all, and we want to forget that because it's more important to look at the end result rather than what prompted the, the bad behavior to begin with. Mike, you're quick to say that blacks tend to, and, and a lot of people agree with you in America, that blacks and other minorities have a big chip on their shoulder just waiting for somebody to knock it off. I hear it all the time. I think a lot of people on this panel have, have dissected and analyzed race because they're professional race baiters. They're worried about race to a point where they're saying, hey, it's all about race. It's never about the individual worth anymore. It's only about the color of my skin. I don't care about the injustices of affirmative action. I don't care about quotas. I don't care about this stupid ebonics. I just care about race. And that's wrong. And more and more Americans are starting to agree with me, black and white. Well, Lenora, do you agree? I just wanted to um, uh, respond to the notion of if race relations are beyond repair. First of all, racism exists. That's not debatable. It's not what's up it for is debate. It is um, debatable. I think the real issue is how we do something about racism. And I think that we have to do that by not focusing on racism, but focusing on America. And I think African Americans, along with other people in this country, have to create a new America because you can't change racism unless you change America. No, you should Even Thomas head, Jefferson knew that. He, he spoke about how embedded the institution of racism was in our society. Actually, racism is as much a part of American culture as anti-Semitism is of Germany's mm -hmm. culture. That, that, is America baloney, that, that is not so. Right. That is total baloney. The, the thing is, you're hearing things like white people this and black people that. We are getting away from the fact that people act according to their own individual um, character. 
and we're talking about culture. Culture, we, uh, culture is a regional thing, and all of us are of an American culture. Most of us were born, raised here all of our lives. That's all we know. But racism exists, yes, but how do you deal with it is what we need to, to talk about. Me talk and it, about does how you deal with it. it does not exist anywhere near where it people say it does. It does not exist. Take but it from me, it does not exist. The dictionary you're says. You're saying racism, racism does not exist. Racism does not exist. The dictionary says, and listen real carefully. I think you got to go along with the same page. D the dictionary says that any race or culture that feels that it's superior to another race or culture and that it should govern, that's racism. And if you believe that there's somebody out there superior to you, then you have to believe you're inferior. Now, how many of you in here feel you're inferior it's to anybody? It's not a question of what you believe. Why isn't it's, it? It's, it's what you have of, up here that makes the situation. <laughs> According to the 1995 Sentencing Project, if you want to take the law a step further just to see the major discrepancies, more than 30% of the nation's black men in their 20s are or have been in prison, more than 30%. That compared to uh, almost 7% for whites in this country. The cart before the horse, the cart before the horse you say. Deal with the issue of us being brought here slaves, the people selling and killing us, and all the other things that have been done to us as a people that we can't express or talk about because you know what, 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 is what, what is it? Is all about about it. You know, so, we keep going back to this thing about slavery, and so many blacks are so hateful towards whites because of slavery. Have they forgotten it was the white the man that time, bought us, but the black man that sold us? It was a business deal. Get rid of it. It's his. Economic. It's over. It's over. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where we go he's, now? He's near. He's near something. And you see, it's interesting. The denial tells you something. Uh, if you can't listen to another person's point of view and get into this denial and no, 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 that's a problem right there. But what he's, what this gentleman is is trying to articulate is that he, he's something missing in his history, and we've never examined coldly, not emotionally the institution of slavery, what it was really like. Well, it sounds what to be the big taboo issue. issue. And Nobody wants the to beginning. talk. But, I, but, but, but all beginning. throughout this nation, it tends to be a, a, the big taboo issue. I think blacks, whites, and, and well, others Steven alike Spielberg, feel uncomfortable talking Steven about Spielberg's it. Steven Spielberg's doing a movie about the Amistad, and PBS is doing a six-part uh, um, uh, documentary on slavery, well, maybe and these that, things will help us Maybe to that understand. comes from a group of people saying, validate my history and yes. therefore well, no, my presence. No, most of us well, let's continue the conversation. History. We have lived well, our Well, you say mystery. We don't need people <laughs> to tell us what happened Rolanda, to us. Rolanda, Rolanda. Wait, I gotta take a quick break. When we come back, jobs in America is what we're gonna talk about. Who has it easier now when you go in for a job? Is it blacks? Is it whites? We're going, the government, you say. <laughs> Who knows what's going to be said in this hour? Or continue yeah, uh, joining, uh, staying tuned as we continue talking about race relations, uh, or are there relations of race in America? How many times should whites apologize for slavery, of which I have nothing to do with? We're back, folks, talking about uh, what some perceive to be in this nation, the great racial divide. Um, many people believe this country is separating, and many are on, at the same time voicing, let's bring it together. Where do we begin talking about race? You say what? I just have more of a comment than a question. I just wish that we could focus more on individuals and who we are as people as opposed to what color we are. I mean, you turn, you turn on the TV or you read the newspaper. Everything is racism. No wonder why we can't get along. It's like, why can't we just focus on who we are as individuals as because opposed to what color we are? Because there are people up here who don't want us to get along. There are people up here who want the great racial divide, because frankly, that's how many of them make a living. Who that's wants the do. great racial can I, divide Can I respond to, I think that that's a wonderful notion, and I think many people, I think many Americans, black and white, are concerned about it. One of the things that a uh, famous Martinican psychiatrist whose name is Franz Fanon points out is that if you oppress people, which is what both slavery and racism is, that that impacts upon how 
how people see what the world is. And so the experience of racism in this country is a real thing, and the way that you make it go away is to figure out how Americans, black and white, can create a new America. You can't just blank it out, or you can't just change the language. You have to create the reality of what America is all about. Unfortunately, too many people are trying to destroy America rather than to build it. Exactly. And, and in destroying America, they have to divide the races. And in terms of who want to divide the races, Nation of Islam, Blue Farrakhan, Jesse Jackson, Maxine Waters, the Congressional Black so Caucus, everyone, that a lot of want, every one of their policies divide America. So, Izola, what I hear you it. saying is that many of the African-American leaders that you've just mentioned have misled this nation? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, Congressman J.C. Watts put it in perspective. He, and he shouldn't have backed down because it's about time America, especially black America, look at this leadership well, you'd have and to what add they've done the to the Los Angeles it. Times and Nightline. And, you see, that's what I mean. It's endemic. It is structural. The when racism it, is yeah, Why were there polls taken? Mm -hmm. From the audience. Oh, the 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 why why were there polls taken for the O.J. Simpson so trial? Why? They don't give us why a chance. Why were there no polls? No, please don't. Please don't. Please don't. Why, why were there no polls taken for the Tupac Shakur murder? Why were there no polls taken for the Jean Benet Ramsey murder? Think about that. There was no poll taken because there would not be this divide. So but to we're sit talking and, about people, not poll takers. Well, I'm we're saying talking about people. Poll takers this are people. This is what we're doing. <laughs> no, they're not. No, they're people. not. They're in that business. We're not no, in the business they're, of they're poll takers. They're very nice people we who need are to poll takers. Well, while y'all are so busy way. talking about racism, Will Ritchie there doesn't agree with it. He has written the book, Racism is a Myth. And Will says that African Americans need to know that there are options to unemployment for instance, racism on the job. What do you mean by that? Well, let me and first do blacks and whites have the same opportunities? Yes, they do. And you can take a look at those. Just Let's hear him out. Just a minute, please. Take a look at those people that succeed. They don't worry about affirmative action. They just take firm action. And if you don't want to work for somebody and they don't want them to work you to work for them, go start your own business. That's what America's all about. But Will, I don't, take I don't want business. affirmative action anyway. Uh, if affirmative action is giving us Christopher Darden, then I don't want it either. <laughs> if it's giving him, if it's giving me a mediocrity, how about like how about maybe how about you get maybe a firm uh, action gave Johnny Cochran. Do you understand what I'm saying? How about if it's giving me a, medi a mediocrity, I why would you want to classify him as mediocrity? He did what he could. No, he no, he line. didn't. Yes, he did. He was not a good lawyer. Well, well, he blew about a Supreme yes. Court justice. Yeah. That's from the audience, from the audience here. Yes, I just want to say I'm a director of a youth program, and I work with teenagers every day. And at first, I would hear them say, "Okay." It's the police, you know, I walk down the street, I'm harassed and this, that, and the other. I try to get the police to come down and conduct workshops to work with the youth. They come down and they say one thing, but with my own eyes, I've seen teenagers Something walking down the, the street, just because right. of the way they dress, just because they have baggy clothes and things like that, they immediately assume that they're going to do something, and that's not necessarily what's going to happen. It's just a style, it's just something that they don't I ride with. The hey. I ride with the police in Atlanta area. They work off of a profile. You have to understand that. And our young people present that profile. So what you're saying is that I'm our communities have a lot to do. I'm saying that instead of being mad at the do. police that we hire to protect us, be mad at those young people out there that are causing all the problems. Rolanda, part, part of, part, <laughs> very quickly, part of how this debate is being framed actually comes out of a two-party system that has been based on endemic racism. The Democratic Party evolved during a century where it was decided that blacks were three-fifths of a person. And the Republican Party came out of a debate around whether or not slavery should continue. So the issue is looking at how embedded, once again, in the institutions, you have to change the institutions but of the society. But can you unravel ye hundreds of years of institutionalization? Oh, absolutely. 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 And the, and the, way, the way that the you do it. She won't let us. The way, the uh, difference I wish I was that powerful. Wait, time, well, you sound the way, like it. The way that you I'm do, sorry for slavery. Way, how many times should whites apologize for slavery, of which no, I have know. nothing to do with? Let Nothing me, to let do me, with. Let me answer. Actually, I'm going to let you answer that question right after this break. When we come back, is the welfare system working? 
Do some take advantage of it by collecting money for doing nothing? Who is abusing welfare? We're going to talk about that and some of the misperceptions that we have about whole chunks of people right after this. You know I'm a white American who you, you won't accept an apology and you're telling me I'm a cover, you're a cover for race baiting and racial divide and without racial divide you'd be out of work. She's the queen of soul, Aretha Franklin, and she's shaking up the Rose Show. Get ready for fun as Aretha sings for us and cooks up a special surprise. Aretha Franklin on Rolanda. Now, if you're going to be in the New York area and would like free tickets to Rolanda, well, please call us at 212-650-2060 going to say let's pick up where we left off my God, I think a lot of people a lot of white people feel the way that you did and I'm gonna let you just express that one more time well, what you Lenora, said before the break. Lenora doesn't understand it I guess but a lot of white people want to say you tell me where to go to apologize for slavery I'll apologize for slavery we got to move on I had nothing to do with slavery but you want me to apologize for it to make you feel better I will but Lenora wants cockamamie ideas like ebonics and she wants ideas that separate the races she doesn't want an apology she won't accept an apology but some of us are, and a lot of us are willing to apologize. But Nora, what do you say when people say that? I, I wouldn't. I don't know if you call it white guilt, but I think it's it's also a feeling of let's move on with this thing. Well, I think the issue isn't there. There is no apology that uh, people in the African. I think it's a bigger demand, which is that white Americans join with black Americans to recreate America. We need a new democracy. We need a new public philosophy. We need new parties in order to challenge the way in which America has been built. Yes, our democracy is better than when we lived under King George. It's improved with the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment and the woman's suffrage movement. But the reality is that America has not grown to deal with its diversity and technology. It's not kept up with its democracy. This is a cover for not dealing seriously with how we can join together and build something. Lord, don't talk to about getting no, no, America I'm has apologized. You. Wait, well, let, let, let Mike, let Mike, let Mike respond yeah. and let me let you talk. Well, hang on. Well, go don't, okay. dis don't dismiss me like that, Mike, uh, I don't even Lenora, know who you are. Because I'm not going to dismiss you. <laughs> well, you just 
you can know, get up here you and know, I'm a, you me. know I'm a white American who you you won't accept an apology, and you're telling me I'm a cover. You're a cover for race baiting and racial divide. And without racial divide, you'd be out of work. Michael, I work with more white people. That's not true. I it work. Is true. Sh can I? Can she I? She would not be out of work. Bonics. Neither would I. Yes. Bonics. I'm, I have been one of the reasons why I have worked overtime to build um, new political parties in this country. For example, the Reform Party, which I think is a vehicle for the kind of restructuring we need, is because I passionately believe that black and white America has to create a new America. I probably work with more white people in a day than Mike talks to black folks in a year. Including the so, bonnet. It's all about what you want to say. Apologize with the Equal Opportunity Bonnie. Employment <laughs> Act, with the Small Business Administration, with the Urban League over employment, and you showed the figures for employment. We should ask ourselves who have been over employment for our black youth for the last three decades? The Urban League. So, shouldn't we ask them why are so many of our young black men unemployed so, and you are the one that's over giving jobs to them? Are you against Urban programs like that that specialize health? I'm against that? any program that's been in existence 30 years and the people are still at the bottom of the, of the, of the, of the <laughs> ladder. There's something wrong with that program. And nobody evaluates these programs. We're now talking about Ebonics. We've had black English since the 60s in Los Angeles has not worked. Our children still score lowest on every test designed to measure educational accomplishment. Now they want more money to expand the but program. But that has nothing to I'm do with dialect. I'm telling you, it, but that all has to do with racism because, it number one, it does. if you did not the have these Tarver black story. leaders out here calling for all these problems that are not working, where they get all the money and they hire their people, and our young children are still at the bottom. We need to look at this leadership. Right, That's what we need what? to look at. I say it's not a question of an apology. Just take a book like Huckleberry Finn and teach it properly. Don't teach it as a. No, no, please. Now, what don't do you do mean that. By don't that? teach it as a. Don't teach it as a. No, because I'm serious. This, I, this is not a game to me. Now, some people are asking for you know applause or I'm saying things to make you applaud, and, and that's when it becomes an industry. The commodification of racism. That's not what I'm but doing. But get back to I'm Huckleberry telling you to read Finn. Huckleberry Finn. Huckleberry Finn is not a boy's book. And every time it's made into a movie, it's made into a book. It is a polemic against racism. And it uses the very dialects. You can't make dialects go away because you don't like what people call them. I hate the word ebonics too. That doesn't change the fact that there but there's are no many dialects. There's no such thing as black country. English. Uh, people from London, from, from England, came here from some villages. They arrived here speaking dis, dat, I ain't, I, I be. And this was before the That's first right. slave ever set foot on this That's continent. Right. So to turn around and say that a black talk this way, that's disgraceful, and it's actually embarrassing for our black people. Isola, if it's you are against special programs She's like right. the Urban League helping youth and that type of thing, and Mike, I want to talk with you too, because I understand you think that, 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 that groups like the NAACP and the rest have really out, outlived their purpose. Let's talk about how, that, how because he make that I want to see if you feel the same way about welfare as well. Well, well, I agree with that. Hold on, hold on. Also, when we come back, one alternate black juror on the O.J. Simpson civil case still says that O.J. is not guilty and the killers have not been found. Will we ever get past this <laughs> issue with O.J. Simpson and race? Looking for him Let's talk about that. Where do we go from here next? Wow. O.J. married, then murdered a white woman. And everybody for that. <laughs> We're back talking about racial divide before we move into our schools. And I want to ask you, Mike, because you're, you're against some of these programs like NAACP, and I just looked at that statistic there, and I wonder if you're against the United Negro College Fund, too. Hold on. Okay. But okay. this young lady was standing here before the break, and you had a question or a comment to throw into the pot here. First of all, I'm not going to try to make excuses for anybody because whenever somebody does something wrong, it's wrong, no matter what color they are. I'm a little sick and tired of hearing about black and white America because, first of all, I don't fit into any of those categories. According to America, I don't exist, and I do. Wow. So it's not a black and white America. Thank you. Thank you very much. What are some of your deepest concerns? Because we've been talking about, we're about to talk about schools, we've been talking about government programs, we've been talking, what are some of your biggest concerns from, from where you stand? 
First of all, we're not even including in polls. It's blacks, whites, Hispanics. We're not even there. We have issues too, and we're not even recognized. So what about that? Mike, I well, think a lot of times the, the programs that you are against are where people go to find identity think, and to have common. I think she'd like to have a replacement of the United Negro College Fund with the United Persons College Fund. Right on. I mean, let's stop, let's stop the Miss Black America. Let's stop the NAACP. Let's have people involved. I look at, I look at your statistic, Rolanda, mm -hmm. about, about the percentage of blacks who graduated versus the percentage of whites. Mm -hmm. It's the economy. Me, stupid. It's all about the economic background, not necessarily because somebody's white. But you know, but I'm going to say, as a graduate of Spelman College, one of the United Negro College Fund College, which was the first college founded for black women fresh out of slavery by the sisters of Rockefeller, okay? That's right. And, and I believe that what I got out of that was more than a scholarship. I learned about the contributions that my people made to this nation that I might not have learned in an Ivy League school. I learned that the traffic light was designed better, the gas mask, the refrigerated car. So it gave me a sense of identity and self-esteem. It also gave me a very unique position to grow as a young woman who happens to have to live under a different type of society. But there are white society. women who don't have an opportunity to be benefited from a united we'll white college We'll allow white fund. girls to well, go to Spelman. It's not <laughs> Rolanda, it's not you know, you happen. can learn that same thing. You can learn, you can learn the same thing from uh, the library by reading. And so it doesn't have to be an organization designed to help you build self-esteem. The main thing that we have to understand is we have to stop feeling victimized. And the racism, the word racism, makes us victims. Right. Well, it makes us feel guilt, uh, uh, victimized, and white people feel guilty. We have to stop that first and get rid of the word. You mm -hmm. see, there's, there's hatred. Wait, 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 wait. I can't hear you, sir. There's Excuse hatred, me. and that's Stand a lot up. different than racism. He's saying, you're saying that we should stop feeling victimized. Stop making us the victim. Stop making then us stop your using, profile. Stop using you're the saying, word racism. You're you won't be a victim. You're black, then you're the profile that the police look for. I can't help that. That's what they work off. I'm just trying and to give you some clues. You're but saying that they work right. off of a profile. But saying this that profile, it's, it's right. This, this, that's, this, that's the way it should be because that that's the way it is. That is the way it should be. That's the way it is. They work no. off of a profile. Well, no, that's, that's not true. You're right. That's just not I ride with the police and I know what they look for when they go out. They see people walking down the street. On their list, they've got something that happened and they see somebody that fits a profile. Me, Willie, they stop them. They don't Excuse stop me, everybody. They've got too many other things to well, do than to well, stop from everybody. The audience here. Willie, in all the years Speak you've been just... protesting or doing whatever you're doing, have you ever experienced anybody calling you the nigger or whatever? I mean, it racism. has been a long faced... time ago. I've a been called nigger ago. more by black people than yeah. white people. Have mercy. Yes. Have mercy. Yes. What? How come they can't be racist? <laughs> From the audience. If there is anything as racism, we are just as guilty as the whites. Well, From, well, actually, actually, how black people, shh, somebody just said, and, and some of the people oh. on the panel are having heart attacks, yes, black that people black can't people be can't be racist. Oh, for crying However, out loud. What, what, that's, what that speaks to, we heard of Louis what that, Farrakhan. What that, what, that, time. what that speaks to, what racism is, it's not a thought. You can't just think it away. It's an organized way of relating to institutionally different populations within the country. Uh, people of Asian descent, Latino, or, and black can be treated race, racistly by all kinds of people. So I think that what people are trying to express is that you can't be racist towards whites. Are there black bigots? Because that's, yes. not, there black bigots? Because, because that's okay. not what racism is. I also yeah. just wanted to say to this young 19-year-old, if a 19-year-old black kid gets up and says in the context of America that police officers are uh, stopping him illegitimate, I mean illegally on the street and harassing him, I think that we as adults have a responsibility, especially if we want to build bridges in this country, not to just, um, you know, flake them off and say, well, my one son <laughs> is being stopped also. That's an experience of what it means to be black in America. My yeah. son and if we want to change it, yes. my if, son has if that's the problem right now, we'll never get over racism as long as you keep talking We're going to continue this. I've got to take a commercial break. We've got to pay our bills. When we come back, efforts to mix the, mix the races with interracial marriages and the mixing of neighborhoods have met some resistance too. We'll also continue talking about the schools and get your question right after this.
Should gay couples have the legal right to marry? You may not want to come to my wedding, but don't stop me from getting married. There is no constitutional right for him to marry. On Rolanda. of interracial marriages is indeed on the rise. You would think that this would help bridge the racial divide, but is it having the opposite effect? Before we get to that, this young lady had a question. Go right yeah, ahead. I just wanted to talk about profiles. My husband was jogging one morning. It was like 6 o'clock in the morning, and the policeman stopped him and asked him who was he running from. Mm. You know, and he was like, I'm jogging, you know, and he has dreadlocks and the whole thing, and that's that's typical. I mean, that's just not um, hysterical. You know, it's just not yeah. white emotion kids. or anything white like that. White teenage kids wait, say it's typical all the time. Yeah. Look, now, wait, let me ask you this. Let me ask you, know, you this, because this young lady gives an experience and everybody's supportive. And then this man Thank gives you. an experience no, of his son, and everybody's like, oh, that Thank doesn't you. count. Is that fair? Is that reverse? And, 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 and then Will. Lenora, then Will. Let me say to all of you that we're not condoning it. I don't think that people... It's true. That's I happening. don't think people are projecting that white youth don't have trouble in this society. I think what people are responding to with Mike is that he's not listening what these black kids who come from a particular experience are saying. I'm he's to just every basically word of it. saying, I hear "Well, it. that happens to my I kid, it. but it's, it's not the same experience Lenora, if it happens to his kids." But the difference is, it happens to white and black teenagers. Then we should do not something. Then, then say to this kid, "I'm listening to every word you're saying." Then you're say not to this to kid, "Fine, let me figure out how to help the you because maybe if we can is, do something." about it in the black community, oh. it won't happen the in other communities. Ralph, what do you say? The Ralph? Difference. The difference is in care. Los Angeles, if Mike, not his teenage son, Mike himself, were riding in a Jaguar in Beverly Hills, it's fine. But if her husband here is driving in a Jaguar, he is that. At well, his let age, me tell you about my husband's experience. Let me tell you about my husband's yeah, experience. When the police stopped him, <laughs> yes. if I had been a policeman, I would have arrested him the way he talked down to that policeman. <laughs> yes. and, and the way he oh, yeah. talked to him, <laughs> let me tell you, he takes no stuff. That's you another show. That's enough. What do you say? What do you say? No, no, no. I, I'm just saying that your whole point of a profile and your point about your son is, is not relevant because if your son puts on a suit and walks down the street, he gets treated differently. If my brother walks down the street, in a suit, he gets treated the same way he gets treated if he has on baggy clothes. Why it's the color of those kids. It doesn't matter how they dress. And one more point is that you pointed out about thugs, and you're talking about thugs. What is your definition of thugs? Of thug, is that people that yes. sell drugs? Well, it's the white people the, that the bring people the drugs that are in. Criminals and so that are out there stealing and robbing. Oh, but white people are criminals, and, and they can walk around dressed I, I up and they don't get stopped. I didn't say that so they had to be thug. blacks. I'm talking you, about. You have to change your definition of profile. Well, we were supposed and to be And we'll be right back in a minute. We'll be right back. Should gay couples have the legal right to marry? You may not want to come to my wedding, but don't stop me from getting married. There is no constitutional right for him to marry. On Rolanda. hurts to see that, that most Americans believe that race relations have gotten worse. Isola Foster has written a book. It's called What's Right for All Americans. And Isola, when we talk about interracial marriages, I know it's not what everybody sees as right for their own life, but do you think, what do you, what's your opinion on that? Well, Linda, I think that when two people meet each other and find they are right for each other, I don't care what color they are or where they are from, God bless them and hope they live happily ever after. Anybody disagree? Let me, let me say, in 1850, there were 405,000 mulattoes in the United States. 360-some thousand were from the southern part of the United States. You're right. It was white man, black woman. But 
extrapolated out over seven generations, that total now would be over 31 million mulattoes or mixed race people. So how can we keep talking about black and white? And OJ, we are Americans. OJ married, then murdered a white woman, and everybody forgets that. <laughs> In a way, everybody that just said something is right, because you can go all the way back to Thomas Jefferson and Sally Hemings. And, and people say, well, Thomas Jefferson never touched Sally Hemings. Well, I haven't met many white people named Jefferson. That's right. All right. Now, as far as OJ, OJ goes, you know what? I would probably be inclined to say probably you're right. Thank you. But, but why? That happens every day. The, the, the killing of a, a wife by a husband, I was keeping stories after the OJ, you know, just keeping clips of crimes like that, and I had to stop after two months because I was running out of storage space. So, so what was it about this case that made polls, be, go back to my polls question. Why did the television manipulate you, but we manipulate your emotions? So you think by the media's perpetuating a lot of sure, the racism? How would a person, how would a person, how would a person in Brooklyn, how would a person in Queens, how would a person in Bronx have an educated opinion on whether O.J. Simpson killed his wife or not? They could not. They would answer out of their own experience. They would progress. answer racially. You put it on TV, you exacerbate but the Simpson. Let, let me also point out, let me, let me also point out that Ralph Wiley has just written a book himself. It's entitled Dark Witness, please quiet down, where he says that racism is manipulation of the human spirit for profit. And I guess that's what you're talking about. That's exactly what it is. I will admit that when we do shows that deal with anything on race, y'all like those shows. You are you yeah, tune them. in. Huh. But but let me tell you, I also believe I, I happen to believe that it that more than just ratings and profit. I hear a thirst and a exactly. hunger for understanding, what's talking no, things out, even if it's to respectfully disagree. To know. That's what I, that's what, what I think. This initial is point can, about a mystery, can, it has to be cleared up. One, one thing, what, Rolanda, can I just say? Wait, wait, let me take this man from the audience, Lenore. Go on, first. Okay, this panelist is saying that these panelists here are not allowing racism to be excluded from our society. The fact that you're making that statement is saying to yourself that these people have a point that this is not something that you dream up. Racism is there and it's embedded. It is ch channels from shadow slavery into institutional slavery in the jobs, the workplace, everywhere that you have seen it. You're, it's just changed form. Well, That's all. You're, when, that is you're just talking about the OJ comment? Form. He should have been tell on the you something. channel. You all didn't let me finish. When I said OJ well, married, on. when I said OJ married and murdered a white woman, and he and he did. You didn't let you didn't let me finish. <laughs> Let him finish his point. Let him finish his point. Do that. Let me finish my point. Let Mike and finish yet, his point. And yet America, and yet America, white and black, doesn't hone in on that. Thank God. So we have made some Don't progress. Don't hone in on it's it. It's about a man murdering a woman, not a black man we murdering didn't a woman. We hone in on it. America didn't hone in on it. Lord, very quickly, say it Okay. I just, I want it. I wanted to uh, respond to this notion of how come we focus on black and white. The reality is that if African Americans live in a nation and other people of color where they don't feel full partnership, you can't <laughs> change that just by changing language or making the word racism disappear. You change laws, you, you can't change attitudes. Well, you, and you have to figure out a way to have people work together and create, again, a new America that's based on a new democracy. Talk about what you mean by new America I when we come back. I, okay, I got to take a break, and I'll get to your question as well. Is there an answer, folks? As that old Rodney King thing goes, can't we all get along? And can our nation move toward a colorblind society? We're going to continue our conversation after this. She's the queen of soul, Aretha Franklin, and she's shaking up the row show. Here we go. Get ready for fun as we meet this sensational winner of 15 Grammy Awards. How did she become a chart-talking legend? What inspires Aretha to reach new heights? 
get a personal look at this natural woman as Aretha performs on our stage and cooks up a special surprise in our kitchen. Meet the incredible Aretha Franklin, only on Rolanda. you were just we we're talking about the great racial divide and I know that you keep talking about this new America this new America and during the commercial break a lot of people started going what is this new America well, I think it's one in which African Americans and others who have been locked out of a full partnership are able to work with white America's Americans and create new institutions I think a lot for example the two parties and those institutions that existed before the abolition of slavery are so embedded with racism that you can't depend on it you can't put uh, Colin Powell at a Republican convention and send Jack Kemp to Harlem and think that that takes care of the Republican Party. It and the Democratic Party both are so institutionalized relative right, to right. racism, it divides black So a new people. America would? We'd have to <coughs> create institutions. We need to do things like support term limits, which many people do, to get rid of career politicians. We have to depoliticize, excuse me, how we do economics and culture. And obviously, we can't debate this. I think we have to work together as activists mm -hmm. to take back our country and make it the kind of country that we want it real, to do. Real Very quickly, quickly don't, don't. I think that Lenore should be commended for her passion toward um, her movement. But I also believe that you're not really listening to what you're saying to other people and their responses. You keep waving people off. And I think that when you say racism, it's a cry for help, but no one's really listening to each other. And listen, that maybe listen, is the problem. Maybe that's because I always say this on the Rolanda. Excuse me, excuse me. I always say this on the Rolanda show. I'm going to say this as we say goodbye because we can talk about this all forever. But maybe that's the beauty of this talk show, that at least we've gotten to listen to us even disrespectfully disagree sometimes. But I think the main thing is to get some type of dialogue going on. We're going to continue talking about race issues, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Yeah.